Are you a businesswoman who is finding it challenging to get your ideas across and make a point? Welcome to Speakers Who Get Results with Elizabeth Bachman, a podcast dedicated to helping women get the visibility they want, whether making a speech or talking in a meeting. Every week, get valuable lessons from Elizabeth or learn from her roundtable conversations with experts and speakers on how to make a difference, not just a point. On to the show with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. Hello, and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. I am Elizabeth Bachman, your host, and this is the podcast where we interview experts from around the world on subjects such as presentation skills, leadership, visibility, and communication challenges. I'm very excited to have you here today because today is the first of four episodes in the Visible and Valued Training Month where we can talk about how do you actually make yourself visible through presentation skills and how you can show your value through presentation skills. Today, I'm talking about speaking strategies that get better results. These are the strategies that you can use to improve your presentation skills. Now, if you are curious about where you are with your presentation skills, you can take our free four-minute assessment at speakforresultsquiz.com. I'll post that link at the end of the show speakforresultsquiz.com. And that's where you can see where you are strong with your presentation skills and where perhaps a little bit of support could help you get the results you need and the recognition that you deserve. As I said, this is the beginning of Visible and Valued Training Month where we are having speaking strategies, that's today. The next one's going to be about writing the script. Then taking your script from boring to bravo, how do you spice up your presentation and engage your audience? And then how to actually get booked because the best speech in the world doesn't do you any good unless you have a place to give it. That will be an interview with the amazing Whitney McDuff where you, can, uh, where you can find out how to actually get those speaking gigs. You can find all of this at elizabethbachman.com slash podcast. It's coming out in the month of November, 2021. So if you're listening after the fact, you can hear them all. And if you're is listening during November, stay tuned. What describes you the best? Do you speak internally within an organization? Do you speak to raise your profile to be more visible so that you can be promoted or hired? Do you speak to, on behalf of your company to promote your company, such as sales? Maybe you speak on social issues and for pro bono, and maybe you're not speaking yet, but you're, you know that you need to start. I'm Elizabeth Bachman. I spent 30 years directing opera around the world. I spent 11 of those years running an opera company. I now leverage those skills to train business presenters. We've got the podcast, and I also run the Visible and Valued Masterminds, where we get together and leverage the power of the group in order to become more visible and more valued. My intention today is to talk to you mostly about strategy, the why and how to actually get it done. Why does it matter? Strategic speaking gets you far. It can get you funding, whether that's direct or indirect funding. Maybe it's funding you, you speak to get funding for your company, you speak to make a sale. Maybe it's indirect because as you become a better and better presenter, the more you show up as somebody in authority, the more you will be given more to do, raises, promotions, maybe even a better job. 
Strategic speaking can also get you allies, the allies who will help you get to where you want to go, the allies who will be supporting you, having your back, uh, working with you, the sponsors and mentors that are so helpful. Nobody does it alone. And strategic speaking can get you recognition. Recognition in terms of promotions as we spoke or a better job, or maybe you're one of those people who watches a speaker and thinks, damn, I'm twice as smart as they are. Why isn't that me up there addressing the group? And if that describes you, come talk to me. That's a big part of what I do with my clients. Now, how? I promised I would tell you how to get that result. You need a strategy so that you're speaking to the right people and you're speaking to the people who can actually help you get those results. You need the, a script, the right words, so that you're reaching people where they can hear you. And you need a great delivery style so that you're showing up with confidence and charisma. These all work together. They feed on each other, they work together. And the main part about them is you. You are the middle. Remember, anytime you are giving a speech where you want to move people to take action, it's an enrollment speech or a sales speech. People promote and recommend people they like, people they trust, people they know. It's you are the key to this all. Now, maybe you're presenting, you know it's going to get cre uh, credibility, but you're not getting here because you're talking to the wrong people. This was something that uh, held me back in my opera career. I knew I wanted to run an opera company. And so for several years, I kept applying to be artistic director or general director for a company. And I couldn't understand why I was consistently on the short list but never actually got the job. Now I know that I was marketing myself to the wrong people. I thought in those days that being really good at what I did and being well-known and appreciated by my peers was enough. But I should have been marketing myself to the boards of trustees, making my connections there because they were the people who were actually doing the hiring. If I'd known that, if I'd known, I, don't, I know this now, if I'd known this in those days, I might have gone on to run opera companies around the world instead of being a speaker trainer. So I guess things happen the way they want to. But I definitely wasted years marketing myself to the wrong people. Or maybe you're not being heard. One of the things that happens a lot, especially to women, is that they are speaking in a meeting internally and they're not being listened to. There's a lot you can do around this. Uh, I'm actually appalled that even in the 20th century, this is still happening. We talk about it all the time and still there are women whose ideas are not being heard. And that is a large, it's one of the things that I'm really passionate about is helping women step up and get that credibility. The key is rule number one, use strategic empathy to make it about them. Who's listening? What do they need to know? And how do they need to hear you? How can you talk to them in a way that they understand this is important. They don't think you're relevant. They're not going to listen. This is what happened to my client, Elena. Elena is the regional manager for an international company. And she's actually responsible for Northern California, Oregon, Washington, uh, Montana, and Utah, and Wyoming. So she's responsible for a lot of business. She was also at that point, the only female regional manager, the only woman. And what she found was she wasn't being heard. And when she finally got angry enough to ask for help, she called a friend and she said, they just made a huge mistake. I told them it was a mistake. 
Nobody took me seriously. And now all this money is going down the drain. What can I do? And the friend said, call Elizabeth. For Elena, the key was strategy. We paid attention to who were the people that mostly needed to hear her, who were the decision makers. And then she leveraged her allies. One of the things that you can do as a woman, especially if you're the only woman, is reach out to the men who do support you and make sure that when you say something, they echo your voice. They'll say, good idea, Elena. Thank you, Elena. Thank you for Elena's idea. And of course, if somebody else steals the idea, then uh, you can say, yes, that's what Elena just said. Thank you for, um, for illuminating what she said. One of the keys with strategy, and we'll talk about this more in the, in the later episodes, is that if you are being talked over, chances are it's because the other the person who's talking over you really truly did not hear you. Your voice did not register because in some way they don't think it's important enough. And so they hear the idea it, and then they think it's their idea. So have an ally echo your voice. You can also reach out to who do they listen to. If there are people you need to reach, maybe senior management, and they're not listening to you, who do they listen to? Reach out to that person or people and say, I have something to say. When I speak, will you make sure that you say, yes, let's hear what Elena has to say. Have somebody help you. It's helping somebody open the door for you until they get to the point where they are used to listening to you. Another strategy we used was we leveraged her location. She was based in Silicon Valley. So what we did was find quotes from famous people in Silicon Valley, uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook or Sheryl Sandberg of, of Facebook, Elon Musk of Tesla, all those are based in, the, in Silicon Valley. She had her team look for people who were, uh, look for phrases that they had used where they'd been quoted that backed up what she wanted to say. And then if she was going to say something, then she could say, and as Sheryl Sandberg said, da, 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 da. If they're not going to listen to you, quote someone they will listen to in order to get their attention. You've got to get their attention enough for them to hear you. The other thing you can do is do the local flavor. So Elena was using uh, the fact that she was in Silicon Valley. I have a client who's in Italy. And one of the things that we're doing is he starts conversations often with uh, saying, oh, I had the most awesome ravioli last night. It's my grandmother's recipe. You should, um, if anybody wants the, the recipe, you should know. I mean, you think about Italy and you think about food and art. So he will mention things that have to do with where he is in Italy and people perk up their ears because they want to hear about that awesome ravioli. At this point, you might be thinking, yeah, but why do I have to leverage other people? Why do I have to get somebody else to let me in? Why don't we have somebody else to open the door for me? They should just listen to me. I hear this objection all the time. And indeed, if you've got something to say, you're smart and you have something to contribute, you should be listened to. But that's not the way the world works at the moment. You need to be listened to. If they're not listening, then find ways of opening the door ask for help until they do listen to you. After all, if you need to get something from an upper shelf at your home, you'll use a stepladder. That's getting help. You don't have to do it all yourself. So many of my clients think they have to solve everything all by themselves. You're allowed to ask for help. It's okay until you get to the point where they're so used to listening to you that they know 
this is going to be worth it. We worked with Elena for, uh, took about four months for people to start really understanding what she had to say. And she said to me afterwards, they're finally listening to me. The strategies you've taught me have become automatic. Thank you. So Elena now has another job, a better job in the same industry. And it's because of the work that we did that got her to a position where she's now able to make more of an impact. The other one, the next key to use is script. That has to do with the words that you use. One of the problems I see over and over is giving too much how and not enough why. Talking too much about how and what and not about why it matters. This takes us back to rule number one, actually. Why is what you're talking about going to matter to your listeners? What do they care about? Use and add that in your script. Use those words. What matters to them? Write down for a minute. What do your listeners want? Might not necessarily be what they need. What do they want? If you give them what they want first, you can slip in what they need once they're listening to you. What's the problem that you solve? Most of the time, if you're doing a promotional speech uh, in, your, in your industry or at a group, the people who are listening are the ones who have a problem for which they hope you are the solution. So be very clear about what's the problem that you solve and why does it matter? What phrases will they relate to? I mean, if you're talking to somebody about the business plan, if they keep talking about the business plan and all you say is the ROI, they're not going to relate. So as you talk to your ideal listeners, your clients, your customers, listen to the words they use and use their words as instead of yours. This happened to my client, Brooke. Brooke was the leader, a leader in a company. She talked to the finance department all the time. And she loved that because Brooke is a very organized person. She loves charts and graphs and she loves numbers. So she got so popular talking to the finance department that they got, she got a promotion. And in part of this promotion, she also had to talk to the marketing department. And that was a disaster. She called me up and she said, my speeches, they always used to love my presentations, but these guys, they don't listen. They don't pay any attention. I can, I can see that they're checking their emails on their phones. What's going wrong? We went back to rule number one. What was it that the creative people in the marketing department cared about? as opposed to what the financial people in the finance department cared about. And she realized that in order to talk to the marketing department, she had to use colors and images. These were visual learners. These weren't chart and graft people. So what we did was developed really two sets of slides for her, graphs, for the, when she talked to the finance department and color, brightness, interesting, that were, things were visually interesting when she talked to the creative people in the marketing department. It was a huge success. And she's actually now running her own company using these principles for matching it, matching the message to the room, the strategy and the words that fit her audience. The third key is style, your delivery style. That's very important. Once you have your strategy, once you have your words, then how you deliver them makes all the difference. Here is a pro tip for these days that so much of what we do is online. Pay attention to your lighting. 
It drives me crazy when I see so many people who have a bright room behind them and you cannot see their faces. Make sure you have enough light in front of you so that people can see your face. Make sure that the area behind you is not lit so brightly that your face goes dark, especially important for my clients who have darker skin. I have the great good fortune of working with many people of color. And this is something that we pay a lot of attention to uh, because the camera is going to focus on whatever is the brightest thing. One of the keys is to make sure that you have lights above you at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. And if you have, if you're wearing glasses like I do, and you're using a ring light, make sure that the ring light is not reflecting on your glasses. Pay attention to your lighting. You can look also in the podcast. I have episodes with Shelly Golden, who is a Zoom makeover expert, who talks a great deal about this. The main thing that people tend to have trouble with in terms of delivery style is nerves. Have you ever seen a presenter stand up and start to do their speech and they forget what they're gonna say, their voice gets very quiet or, or monotone, or maybe their shoulders come up around their ears and you can tell that they're nervous. Maybe you've actually been that person. The key to this is go back to rule number one. Make it about them. Get out of your own head. Most of the time when we're nervous, you're think, they're thinking, oh, they're going to think I'm terrible. They're going to hate it. They're gonna, I'm going to look like a fool. It's all about me. Get out of your own head and make it about them. What do they need? How can I serve them? How can what I'm asking them to do be a benefit to them. Remember, no one's going to come and listen to you unless they want you to be great. They've taken the time to listen, to tune in or come to your speech. They want you to be awesome because they're hoping that you're going to have an answer to their problem. My client, Mitra, used to get terribly nervous whenever she was looking for large donations. She's the CEO of a general director of a nonprofit, a wonderful small nonprofit that was doing really good work. And she was used to getting donations of $25 up to $100. She was very comfortable asking for that sort of thing. But when it came to asking for a larger grant, she got very nervous. She would flub. She would forget what she wanted to say. She got all flustered and sabotaged herself. And she lost several opportunities. She called me up and said, can you help me? I had helped her with some speeches before. She said, I have a specific opportunity. One of the people on my board has set me up with the senior partner of a major law firm. They're interested in sponsoring us. They're interested in giving us a grant. I don't dare blow it. Can you help me? What we did was we reframed the offer in her mind. She was thinking, oh, I'm going to be asking for $20,000. What am I going to do? That's so much money. Well, of course, it was to her and to her small, her small nonprofit. But for the law firm, it wasn't bad. They could manage that. So she focused on how sponsoring her nonprofit was going to make the people in the law firm feel good about themselves. It was going to be great publicity for them. As a matter of fact, giving her this grant was a gift. The day she had to go and make the presentation we were supposed to meet in downtown San Francisco. I went with her. The meeting was on the 29th floor of the skyscraper. So we stood outside the skyscraper and I made her say, this is my building. 
This is my territory. I am bringing a gift. And when she could say that without trembling, we walked in and in the lobby, she said, this is my lobby. We got in the elevator. This is my elevator. I am bringing a gift. We got out on the 29th floor. She said, this is my floor. I'm bringing a gift. I wasn't able to go with her into the interview, but I told her to pause before she went in and extend her energy into the office. Say, this is my office. They are my guests and they are going to love the gift that I'm giving you. I'm giving them. And indeed, she came back out and she had a pledge for twice as much as she had asked for. It was a huge success. She wrote me a lovely note afterwards to say, thank you, Elizabeth. You believed in me until I could believe in myself. And that made all the difference. So to review, the strategy is, you need the three keys of strategy, script, and style. We'll be talking about this all in the month of November, the Visible and Valued Training Month. Check the Speakers Who Get Results podcast schedule. Today was about strategy. Our next episode is writing a script that wows. How do you actually find your ideas and write your script? From that, after that, we have From Boring to Bravo, how to make your script better once you've written it, and how to get booked as a speaker. You can find all of this information at elizabethbotton.com slash podcast. And remember that if you're curious how your presentation skills are, you can take our free four-minute quiz at speakforresultsquiz.com. This has been Elizabeth Bachman. I'm so glad you joined me today. Be sure to, to tune in next month, and I'll see you on the next one. We have just concluded another great episode of Speakers Who Get Results with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. If you got value from today's episode, please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues. You may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources. Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes. And thanks for tuning in.